to another video. I'm finally back with another educational video and today I will talk about PFAS. When I started my master thesis six months ago, I had never heard about PFAS before. And I mean, I had been studying environmental things for like the last four and a half years. But I do think that if you are kind of up to date with environmental issues, you will eventually stumble over PFAS or maybe you have already. So PFAS, which is pair and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are a group of man-made chemicals that include many different compounds. If you're into chemistry, this is the structure of two common ones. These are carbon chains made of carbon and hydrogen where at least one hydrogen atom has been replaced by fluoride. And this makes the molecule very hard to break down. How hard? Actually quite similar to a grey stone. So from now on, we're gonna think of PFAS as small, small pieces of grey stone. So PFAS is both water and oil repellent, and it can resist very high temperatures. If PFAS would be used in any product, you would not really have to worry that it would change if you store the product in a certain way or if it got wet or something like that. Therefore, they have been used in production since the 1950s for clothing and textiles, non-stick cookware, cleaning agents and personal care products such as shampoo, toothpaste and makeup. It is also a key ingredient in firefighting foam because of its temperature resistance. But what happens with the PFAS in these products? Say that we got a non-stick pan. As you have probably seen, a Teflon pan will get old and the material will eventually start to come off. And get into our food. And then we'll eat the food and the PFAS will get into our body. If we're using a beauty product containing PFAS, the PFAS will get into our body through our skin. The third example is the firefighting foam, which stands for the biggest point source of PFAS contamination. You probably have one of these in your house, but hopefully you don't have to use it that often. But in firefighting and air industries, as well as oil refineries, it is used a lot more frequently. When it is used, the PFAS will get into the soil and work its way down to the groundwater, which later will become drinking water, or to lakes or other water bodies, into fishes. And then we will drink the water and eat the contaminated fish. And the PFAS will, yes, get into our bodies. So as the saying goes, for PFAS, all roads lead to the human body. Or was it Rome? Okay, so what happens when PFAS gets into the body? Can't we just pee it out like other toxins? Nope, unfortunately not. It will bind to proteins and accumulate in tissue, blood and the liver. PFAS is hence bioaccumulative and a toxin that the human body, animals, or plants can get rid of. So you're probably wondering now, do I need to worry? So I remember I said PFAS is like grey stone. When it comes to stability, yes. But for risks, no. PFAS has significant higher risks than grey stone. The risks from PFAS are still a quite new and unexplored research topic but studies have shown that the accumulated PFAS can lead to an increased risk of kidney and testicular cancer, reduced fertility in women, reduced quality of semen in young men, and thyroid diseases. So yes, we should be worried. And the decision makers are too. PFAS, which is one type of PFAS, was prohibited with some exceptions, in the European Union in 2008 and another type called P4 will be prohibited in 2020. Before that, in like 2000, uh, 3M decided 
as a major global producer to phase out the production of PFOS. And similar initiatives have occurred in the US and Canada for PFOA. But in, for example, India, there are no regulations for PFAS. PFAS substances can travel far, and research has shown values of PFAS in mammals in Greenland and the Faroe Islands and organisms living in remote areas such as the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. According to a study by Gobelius et al., where the levels of PFAS in Swedish groundwater and surface water were analyzed, 46% of the inland surface water exceeded the annual average environmental quality standards of the European Union Water Framework Directive of 0.65 nanograms per liter for PFOS. This study also showed that 3% of the samples from drinking water sources exceeded the guideline value of 90 nanogram PFAS per liter recommended by the Swedish National Food Agency. Okay, so what about the future then? The production is more restrictive now, right? Yes and no. In general, the production is lower. However, the production of products with PFOS and PFOA and some other chains have been reduced in the Western world, but as the demand has still been high, the production has been high in China and did actually increase during the first decade of the 21st century. Additionally, the shorter chains have substituted PFOS and PFOA and have hence increased. Okay, so let's bring some hope into this now. So finally, the PFAS is getting more attention in media and there are more and more research and legislations on their way. But here, I want to give you some tips for how you can avoid or minimize your use of PFAS. So first, when you are buying takeaway food, avoid the containers with like the plastic surface which is water and oil repellent because it will probably contain PFAS and if you're eating frozen food take the food out of the plastic container before you put it in the oven or microwave because sometimes it says that you should leave it in but don't third avoid microwave popcorn you can make them yourself on the stove instead and it's as good four don't use non-stick cooking ware never five this one is a little bit tricky, but you want to avoid PFAS in beauty products. And this is quite hard. What you can do is, if you're going through the ingredients, don't buy anything where they have something that starts with pear or polyfluoro, because that means it's PFAS. You can never be sure that it's not PFAS in your product, but if you see that, you're sure that it is. PFAS in it so don't buy that and also you can email brands and different stores and make them stop using PFAS in their products and stop selling products with PFAS in. There's a really good Swedish Instagram uh, called Surfis and there you will get tips of like products with PFAS in and they are doing a really really great job there so follow them. And finally about makeup, if you're buying makeup with some kind of environmental label such as in Sweden we got Svanen and Bra Miljöval but also the EU eco label means that there is no PFAS in the product. Number six, use eco-friendly impregnation for shoes and again try to use products with the environmental labels that I mentioned before. My last tip is avoiding buying new active wear products because you know they are very water repellent which is yeah it's needed if it's raining you know but you they are using a lot of PFAS in the production so if you buy them secondhand it's a lot better but also try to avoid a material as much as possible but also if you buy clothes with the GOT label it means that there's no PFAS in them either Okay, so that was all about PFAS for today. 
I hope it made sense to you and I hope it made you a little bit more concerned about the products you're consuming and uh, yeah please comment down below what you thought about it if you liked it and also if you have any further questions and then I will try to answer them so thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video bye <laughs>